Hey everybody, welcome back to AIT 1003. I'm Mike Deal, your instructor for this class. Uh, we've been talking about fluid power systems, but you know, we said they're both uh, pneumatic and hydraulics. We've been kind of talking about a big view of 10,000 foot level, uh, about what they do and things like that. Uh, and we're going to start dialing down a little bit, get a little bit tighter focus with each lecture and each lesson. So we've talked about these systems. You can have some pretty elaborate systems that do some very sophisticated things for us in our processes. Uh, but when it comes down to it, you really need about four or five fundamental things to have a, uh, a fluid power system. Okay, we're going to talk about each one of those individually. First of all, <clears throat> you got to have some fluid, whether that's oil. Uh, back in the old days, or when the fluid power first came out, hydraulics first came out, they used water. But now we're using uh, we're using um, hydraulic oil in about 99% of the applications. Um, the other fluid is air. Okay. It uh, could be a, a compressed gas, but in most cases you're going to use an air compressor that's going to take atmospheric air and that's going to be your fluid for a pneumatic system. You also have to have a pump or compressor to do something with these, to move these fluids. Okay. Uh, you've got to have a prime mover. That is the device, whether it be an electric motor, a gasoline engine, or whatever, uh, that is what is going to move our pump or our compressor. So our prime mover has got to be a, an element in our fluid power system. And also you have to have conductors, okay? Um, these are typically known as lines and hoses, but in a more professional term that we use is conductors, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and also you're going to have to have some type of an actuator. This is the part that does the work for us, all right? We can have the fluid and we can have the, pump, the, pr the pressure and the flow, but we've got to be able to do work, and these actuators do the work for us, okay? So putting it all together in some uh, pictorial example here, Talk about first. You got to have the fluid. Okay, your fluid is stored in a reservoir. Uh, if it's a fluid, if it's a hydraulic system, of course. If um, it's uh, an air, it's in pneumatic system. Okay, I'm going to show you a picture of that as well. But in a hydraulic system, you got a reservoir that holds our fluid. Okay, and we have our pump that creates flow. A lot of people think this creates pressure. Pressure comes from a different source, and we're going to get into that a little bit later too. But our pump is creating flow because we want our fluid to flow through our system. Okay. And then we're going to make it flow into some type of actuator that creates a force. And that force is doing some type of work. Okay? And like I said, it could be as simple as um, a log splitter, you know, running a wedge through a log, um, or more industrial type things where we're using conveyors. Um, it could be mine, you know, mine cutting heads down in the mines. But this is our actuator. It's doing some type of work, creating a force. And of course, you've got your return flow and your pressure and your flow and your and your oils, of your oils, excuse me, going through conductors, which is your hoses, okay? Now, <clears throat> we're going to talk about, like I said, each one of these components individually. The first one we're going to start with is a reservoir, okay? This holds the hydraulic fluid that's needed for our system to work, okay? And they do require maintenance. A lot of people think it's just a vessel to hold oil, but no, there's, a, there's maintenance that has to be done. It's critical because you'll get, these, you'll get the oil flowing through your system, and if you have the smallest leak, you rarely find a hydraulic system that has, doesn't have some type of very small, minute leak, okay? Uh, but you want to keep those leaks to a minimum. But if you've got, uh, say, for example, you've got a, a hose that's got a slight leak to it, okay? When it strokes out a cylinder or an actuator in one direction, it's going to be pushing oil that way. On the return side, it's going to be drawing in probably atmospheric air and any dirt and things like that. This dirt gets to traveling in the system, it winds up landing in the bottom of our tank. We open up our tank and we've got sediment on the bottom. If the sediment builds too high, then the suction um, uh, screen and hose on the pump side will start to suck that sediment up and run it through the system. Okay? So again, it requires maintenance. We've got to take it apart, we pull this apart, our, our um, access cover right here, we pull it off after we've drained it out, and we usually typically clean it up. On the inside, we remove all sediment. Uh, because you want your oil to be nice and clean so that the valves don't start to sticking so that uh, the debris that's carried in the oil doesn't start cutting seals on cylinders and start puking oil out on the floor, okay? So again, it has to have maintenance. This breather cap, it's got to stay on all the time, okay? This, I'm, I'm going to show you a better picture of it. But a breather cap, <clears throat> particularly in an industrial environment, every time you have a cylinder or an actuator that, that actuates, you're evacuating oil, okay? And when you evacuate oil, something's got to go back in behind it. Okay, you can't just create a vacuum in this tank. It's got to breathe. So atmospheric air is going to go into 
the hydraulic unit, or the, uh, excuse me, the reservoir. So it's going to be, so it's a living and breathing organism, so, so to speak. And you draw dirt in there. I can't tell you the number of times I've gone to, to uh, help with a diagnosis problem with the hydraulic system, and there is the hydraulic, the, the cap to the reservoir hanging by the chain, and, you know, anything and everything can get inside that tank, okay? And so that's why it's critical is one of those simple things to keep the cap on there, too. It's usually got some type of a, a filter mechanism in the cap to keep out large chunks of debris or things like that. But, again, my point is, is this is a reservoir, and this is, is something that's going to require maintenance. Now, here's a little cutaway. Um, <clears throat> you've got two sides to a reservoir, okay? This is, there's a metal baffle right here, right down the middle of this reservoir. It's right down the middle, running this way, right here in the halfway mark, okay? And we suck on one side, okay? We pull our fluid uh, up to our pump suction side, and it's usually a, a very coarse screen to keep large pieces of debris out. Uh, if there's something that gets, you know, in our system, maybe a piece of wire, maybe it could be a you know, zip tie, it could be anything that accidentally got, winds up in our system. This suction screen will help filter it out before it hits our pump, because once it hits our pump, it can damage it. Or, best case scenario, the pump shoves it through the system and it winds up really wreaking havoc on our system. But my point is, is that we've got a suction screen right here on our inlet to the pump. Um, we've got a baffle here because when our oil comes back into our reservoir, it's circulating. It's a, it's a, it's a living, breathing system here. Means we're circulating back into the reservoir. Okay, when we come back into there, it's going to be uh, very turbid. Uh, there's going to be a lot of motion in the oil, and, it'll, and so what you don't want to do is it cre uh, creating air in our uh, system that's going to be sucked up into the pump. So when it gets returned, it goes to the other side. Now there is a cutaway right here so that this oil can get over here to be sucked up, but the idea of the baffle is to sort of uh, baffle that um, the roughness of the fluid coming back in there, let it settle out, and then come over to this side and get sucked up and re recirculate but there's a baffle in between the two. Um, there's a drain plug on the bottom, and you can take these access ports off the end, get in there and clean them out. And again, there's our breather right here. Uh, so uh, this is just like a, a basic cutaway um, of, of a uh, um, reservoir for a hydraulic power unit, okay? Here's a symbol. Now, I'll tell you this much. Um, there's a lot of focus on this class and the other classes for fluid power on symbols, okay? You're going to see schematics, and the schematics are not going to say pump, you know, it's not going to say reservoir, it's not going to say valve. It's going to give you symbols, okay? So there are, no word, there are very little words on a schematic, but you're using symbols. So this is the symbol of a reservoir, okay? And here is a small, a very simple schematic. Oh, don't worry about these other devices right here, but right here, this red arrow is pointing to a reservoir, okay? So this is where um, our reservoir pulls oil up to our pump and on out through our system, but our big focus here is that is the symbol for a reservoir. You will see that again, so make sure that you uh, take, take practice and try to draw one out. Just, you know, it kind of helps ingrain it in your memory. But uh, that is the symbol for a reservoir. Now when you've got a pneumatic system, the reservoir is the air tank on the compressor, okay? There's, there's, and there's all kinds of compressors and different configurations. Uh, there's screw compressors, piston uh, reciprocating um, uh, compressors, but all of them will store the air in some type of a tank or vessel like this. Okay, very simple. You don't really go into um, you don't really go into a, um, a uh, <clears throat> air tank once they've built it and welded it up. It's pretty much sealed, with the exception most of them have a drain line on the bottom because you are pulling air, atmospheric air, to compress it, and you're going to store it in that tank. Well, we live here in Kentucky. Oh, excuse me. We live here in Kentucky, and uh, we've got a lot of humidity. And we pull that your, your, your compressor pulls that humid air in there, and it compresses it and stores it in the tank. Well, that includes the humid air, the water. Okay. So what will happen is the water will settle out in the, to the bottom of the tank, and there's typically a drain valve that you want to drain that off. So that's part of your maintenance for a pneumatic reservoir. Okay. So you have to drain that off. I've worked in some places where gallons and gallons of water will come out of a uh, air compressor tank or a, a reservoir, uh, and you just got to keep them because that water will build up to the point where, when it's called for, when a device downstream is calling for air, the water goes with it and it wreaks havoc. Okay, so uh, this is a schematic of a pneumatic system. Okay, and on a, 
schematic for pneumatics, they don't typically show an air compressor. But what they'll do is this will say, for example, a machine builder builds a machine, and here's all the devices that are on the machine. They'll expect you to hook the supply air up to that machine. So this is the supply for the, uh, for the um, pneumatics uh, air side of it. And so when you see this triangle right here, you'll know that that is you're to, to supply the air with, uh, to that machine at this point. Okay? So again, symbols are going to be very important in this class. You're going to see them a lot. You're going to see them on quizzes. You're going to be expected to interpret schematics. So make sure you start paying attention with this and uh, get these symbols down. Okay? The other thing we've got to do is we've got to get fluid to flow. We've got to pull that fluid out of the reservoir, and we've got to get it flowing down to our system. Okay? And we use a pump to do that. The pump basically converts mechanical rotary motion, okay? okay first of all, we've got an electric motor, typically, okay? Typically, we'll have an electric motor that has rotary motion going on. It's converting electrical energy into rotary mechanical en uh, energy, rotating mechanical energy, then uh, through a shaft and coupling hooks to a pump, and we are creating, through that rotary motion, we are take, converting that mechanical energy into the flow of our fluid. Okay, or a hydraulic fluid. Okay, now a compressor does sort of the same thing. It converts that mechanical rotating energy uh, into airflow with the, with the compressor building uh, pressure and allowing the airflow. But what we're doing is we are converting the uh, rotary motion through our pumps and compressors to get the flow uh, of our air or our fluid into our system. Okay, and there's a simple uh, little file here. It's just watching it kind of feed into it. This uh, vein pump is then kicking it out, and this pump is creating flow, okay? All right, now, here's the symbol for a pump, okay, in the hydraulic system, all right? So, again, in, in pneumatic systems, you're not going to see the compressor and the pump on a schematic. You're just going to have the supply hookup point. But on a uh, hydraulic schematic, you're going to see this. This is a symbol for a hyd uh, hydraulic pump, okay? So we've got a pump, and we've got our, uh, a reservoir, and we're feeding our pump. We're going to talk a little bit about that in just a minute, okay? A couple of different types of pump, pump styles of pump. Here's just a, you know, a basic symbol for it. This is bi-directional. That means the pump will pump whether you're turning it left or right. Gear pumps will do that, okay? Vane pumps will also do that. Uh, this is a uh, pressure compensator. This, this um, arrow right here in diagonal means there's compensation. It's variable, okay? So the output of this pump is variable, but you'll notice they all three have... Uh, sort of like flow arrow directions uh, right there for us. So it, you see these circles with an arrow in it, some type of arrow, that is a pump. So get used to that, all right? And then, of course, with compressor, we talked about it is the pump as well, but you will not see that on a, uh, on a schematic, okay? But this is a reciprocating air compressor right here that you'll typically see uh, if you buy a compressor at uh, Home Depot or, or Lowe's or something, it's got a reciprocating, unless it's a screw type compressor. Uh, it is reciprocating, pulls the air in, closes the valve off, and then ex exhausts it to our system out here. And these valves are back and forth, opening and closing, and uh, allowing it to compress on the hot side over here. Okay? So, and this is a screw type compressor as opposed to the reciprocating, pulling air in here, and these very, very tight um, machined uh, screws that you can see right here. Very, very tight. The air gets pulled in there and gets compressed and compressed and compressed tighter and tighter. It's until it comes out, but that is a screw conveyor. I mean, excuse, excuse me, a screw compressor. Okay, and of course we also have to have a prime mover. And as I said before, prime, the primary uh, prime mover that you will see is uh, is a three phase electric motor. Okay, we've got to we've got to take that electrical energy and, and convert it into electrical or excuse me rotating mechanical energy, and that's what our electric motor does. We couple it up to the pump, and that's what gets the pump moving. Okay. And with the, with the compressor, a prime mover right here is this motor, and it's belt driven. Okay, and this is a reciprocating. You can kind of see the cylinders. It's a lot like an engine. Okay, uh, but this, these are cylinders with reciprocating uh, pistons in there. So and it's driven by a belt. Okay, and our prime mover, our motor symbol, looks a lot like this. Okay, typically you'll see it as this. Okay, it's a motor with a shaft. Okay. And in this case, this gives you, this arrow tells you what direction the motor will turn in. In this particular case, this motor is telling me that it's going to, it runs in a counterclockwise direction, okay, uh, for, for that system. If it's hooked to a pump, 
and it's got this arrow that says that this motor has to run counterclockwise for that pump to run. Okay, uh, so and, but this is a standard uh, symbol for the uh, prime mover or the pump, or excuse me, the motor. And putting it into context, here's our motor right here. Okay, and we've got it coupled to the pump. And the pump is in the reservoir. Now, this is not exactly a symbol. This is, like I said, this is more of a pictorial. It's got some symbols in it, but uh, this is our reservoir. This is our pump and the motor that is driving the pump through some type of coupled shaft, okay? All right, so again, symbols are very important, all right? And finally, the last thing we need, we've got to be able, we've got, we've got the fluid, okay? We've got it stored, and we've got, we've, uh, we've got a place, uh, a way to move it, okay, with our compressor or our pump. And then we've got a way to turn that compressor and pump with our prime mover. And now we've got to have conductors. As you probably better know them as hoses, okay? Or lines, possibly lines too. But hoses are what carry our fluid, okay? And there's usually a lot of maintenance, or I say there's significant maintenance when it comes to uh, uh, conductors. Um, they're subject to motion all the time. If they're laying down in a track, uh, you know, they can also get rolled up and things like that. So they're bending and flexing. We talked about earlier about how um, <clears throat> there is a, uh, a, a, a woven coat, uh, you know, steel uh, mesh around those hoses that can often break. And so that's where some of the maintenance comes from. But, you, you know, it routes the flow through, you know, from our, from our pump all through the components back to the reservoir, okay? But we use, we use hoses and pipes and lines to, in order to carry our fluid, and we call those conductors, okay? Now, it also, everything we've talked about as far as you know, these hoses right here uh, and some of our other components, they create resistance in our system. We're going to talk more about that later in, coming, in uh, lectures coming up. But uh, that's something else that the hoses do as well. we got to always keep that in mind. But again, those are the five things that we want to talk about. Here you see the schematic for the uh, conductors. We've got one going from our reservoir up to a filter. To our, our, there's one between our filter and the pump. We've got one from our pump out to our first control valve, to our hydraulic motor. So all of these lines, when you see these straight lines like this, those are our conductors. Those are our lines. Those are literally how the fluid gets from here to over here and the route that it takes. It's almost like reading a road map. Okay? These are the streets, you, know, you just follow the streets, and that's the way that the fluid flows. Now, it can get very complex in a hurry, but just to let you know, this is the symbol. You see these symbols right here? They are symbols. They are, um, <coughs> they are uh, conductors or lines, okay? One thing I will, I will note to you also, you'll see a dot right here. That means there's a connection point. We're gonna, we'll get into that in your lab. It, it touches on that in the first lab, but when you see a dot like that, that's a connection point. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Okay, all right, but again, um, that's what the conductors do for us, and those are the five components that we've got. I want to take a quick break here, and we'll come back and we're going to talk about actuators and round this out, okay? So other than that, uh, just I hope you're taking notes. Be sure to read your textbook, okay? And uh, come back and we'll watch the, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about the, the, the last part of this, which is actuators. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in a bit.